지난 11월 16, 17일 양일간 오클랜드 대학 비즈니스 빌딩에서는 한유 외교수교 50주년을 기념한 컨퍼런스가 열렸습니다. 이 행사에서는 한국의 지난 역사를 되돌아보고 한국의 급속한 경제 발전상 한유 관계 등에 대한 다양한 패널 디스커션이 진행됐습니다. 그 현장을 영상에 소개 드립니다. Entirely to our own talent and hard work. Um, I think what this signifies is that over the last 50 years, we've moved a long way past just the standard diplomatic relations between New Zealand and Korea. We have artists, business people, students, tourists, scientists, um, and many other sort of areas of activity between us, and we're all working actively to explore new areas where we can work together more closely. This means that the relationship today has a very vibrant momentum of its own. I think as we think about that vibrant uh, momentum, it is worth reflecting a little on how we got to where we are today and how we will continue to drive forward uh, that relationship. While I think we've been talking today a little bit already about the Korean War, and certainly uh, the New Zealand Korea relationship was forged initially uh, through our participation in that Korean War 60 so or so years ago. Um, and even though our diplomatic relations were only formed 50 years ago, our bonds really do go back to that initial um, Korean War experience. And never look back. Uh, well, has looked back, of course. But uh, she's worked with young people and their families in the community, and particularly the Korean community here in Auckland for many years as a researcher, as an educator, as a migrant, advisor, uh, a minister and a counsellor. As an advocate for Asian migrants in New Zealand, she's often invited to speak about migration and the mental health issues in particular of migrant communities. She's currently conducting research on the 1.5 generations, the Korean Kiwis, or as we like to call them, the Koeys, uh, and the way they parent. Uh, this is a PhD project at the University of Auckland. When I heard about this conference about a year ago, when uh, <coughs> We were talking about what to do for the, um, the celebration of the 50th anniversary of Korea-New Zealand diplomatic relations. Uh, I talked to several Koreans, well, actually many Koreans who are running business here, and they all say there are problems here, here in New Zealand business environment. The market is too small, there's a language barrier, racism, discrimination, and competition among Koreans, and now and other Asians is too much. And also, in terms of food business, the conservativeness of the mainstream culture, which does not deal with This is where we are looking forward to the 2030s countries rather than North Asian countries. Anyway, it was raked on this. But let's put it in some perspective. We also asked, as already been noted, in the early 90s, and we saw a big wave in the 90s and another big wave in the 2000s. According to our embassy in Seoul, New Zealand has one of the highest Korean expat communities in the world. Uh, which is quite a staggering kind of figure, really. This paper, you there are no great surprise migrants. We also know in a huge boom into the kind of the things, of course, that will ultimately emerge are second generation Koreans. That is, those that are born here and raised their family in Auckland. And of that, about the same religion, people who are affiliated with religion are less likely. Particularly in a climate, economic climate like this, 
with a name that isn't an anglicised name. And there's been quite um, you know, 20 years of research of studies where, in one case, um, the same CV was put in, one with an anglicised name, one with an... ...in New Zealand, um, and with the aim of finding spouse in his, own, his or her... I understand the two different cultures, but at the same time, well, as um, uh, Ms. Kim uh, properly pointed out, that they may not be good either. You know, <clears throat> as a matter of fact, they do speak good Korean and good Chinese at home, and their parents think their children are totally bilingual because they go to you know, local school, they speak good English, they get relatively good mark, and at home they speak Korean. However, now, when they go to job market, especially international job market these days. Think about this. The Korean students, by the time when they graduate university, at least sometime, if not one year or half a year, sometime they would have spent some time in overseas, particularly English-speaking country, and Korean schools and parents take more money on learning English. So, in general, these days, young people in Korea, they have a very, very good command of English, both in speaking, but particularly reading and writing. And now, 1.5 generation produced here, there is a question if these people can efficiently compete with those who are well-educated in Korea. All the Koreans has have to thank you to do that for that. The Korean conference is extra interesting to me because it's giving me things I don't know and perhaps opening up some comparisons I hadn't thought of. But that's, uh, that's good for me. I don't know whether it's good for other people. Um, we've just been talking about migration and I think we could have put it in a larger context because the Koreans are only one group of people who've come to New Zealand. There are many other people who have come. We might have been more comparative. I think there's some scope for that. Koreans, of course, are quite here attached to their church. But so were Samoans when they came, and still are. Is there a comparison you could make? So I think there are probably lots of things we could explore as a result of this. In Southeast Asia, my, a lot of my work was on the 1950s. And then it seemed to me in the Southeast Asia the Americans were try to imitate what they'd done in Korea, where they thought they'd fended off the communists and, with the help of a strong man uh, and an army, which they could train. And I think probably the Americans thought they could do that elsewhere, yeah. in Vietnam, and it didn't work. And there's another comparison, why didn't it work there, when it did work in Korea. Since, nine, since 2005, and I made a short list that uh, I've tried to focus uh, my research and my discussion today, it doesn't matter where I aim this, right? Uh, these two countries have diverged uh, from each other in particular. China is also... The following year she explained, given knows why North Korea's interest approach. However, it was noted more concerned over Libyan and Cuba in general, and that New Zealand was putting... The 1986 policy... Got public, uh, some military... ...reforms from the beginning, because uh, it's, and that there would be um, also when one follows that up in terms That's certainly not the case today and to my personal knowledge no, it hasn't not. been so for a long, long time. Since the late when 19. did that change? Kim Jong-un, I mean, can actually uh, hide uh, in North Korea or is that uh, his uncle matched uh, some of what you described, Professor Lankov, uh, but that was a fairly unique period and certainly 2004 was very unique uh, coming out of 2002. It is that even the future indicates that historians will start trying to make sense of what is going on now. I believe that the, the uh, South Sunshine policy is a more practical and yes. uh, more feasible. This is the Auckland Institute of New Zealand Asia Institute. This is the first year of New Zealand. This is the first year of 그 이번 회의에서는 주로 이제 한국과 뉴질랜드의 그 양국 관계를 
앞으로 어떻게 더 발전시킬 수 있는지 예, 그런 걸 이제 주로 토의를 했고 거기에 이제 덧붙여서 뉴질랜드 사람들이 한국 특히 한반도 북한 문제에 대해서 좀더그 이해를 돕도록 저희가 아, 좋은 기회로 이렇게 활용을 했습니다. 저도 오늘 아침에 저 기조 연설을 했고 또 뉴질랜드 외교부의 그 차관보 한국을 담당하는 차관보께서도 그 양국 관계 그리고 아태 지역 전반에 대해서 좋은 얘기를 했는데 오늘 보니까 우리 교민분들께서 많이 참석을 해 주셔가지고 참저 마음 든든하고 기쁩니다. 일단 앞으로도 우리 그 뉴질랜드에 사시는 우리 그 한국 교민들께서 어, 뉴질랜드 사람들과 좀더 이렇게 가깝게 이렇게 자주 접촉을 해가지고 어, 한국을 좀더 알리고 또 그럼으로써 그 한국과 뉴질랜드의 우호 친선 관계를 증진하는 데 많은 기여를 해 주시도록 이렇게 당부드리고 싶습니다. There is urgent need to provide strategies for localization of Korean business. <laughs> Thank you very much for that um, frank uh, presentation. Now I'd like it's something which is very unique. This is the, the wonderful thing to be launching this in the, um, the 50th anniversary where we celebrate the joining of New Zealand and Korea in not only friendship but also business opportunities and education. And what you're going to see, this is the first time this has been actually launched to the general public in the world. And we have chosen this event as a special occasion to celebrate with my colleague uh, what New Zealand and Korea can do together, which also was spread across the entire Asian world. And before Patrick joins me, I just need to say this is a true relationship of the talent of New Zealand, of our, our creative talent of New Zealand. And I'm going to share with you a couple of creative talent ideas at the end. And Patrick's going to share with you the vision. And this is true vision of the amazing and incredible technology of the Korean people. This is a vision that Korea, who set itself many years ago on the path to developing the internet and developing technology, which Samsung grew out of and some of the great industries of Korea, then embraced the education and the dream that Patrick and I have. And we do have a dream. We are dreamers. We are dreamers when you see this today, and then I will end on showing you some of the product and how we work together. This is a true partnership model, which I hope that you can take away with you and tell everybody in your neighbourhood about today. You need to be proud of this. This is from a Korean, and this is from New Zealand. We need to be so proud that two countries can come together to make an influence and a difference to millions of children's lives across Asia. So you're going to be five-year-olds as well also today. One look is that well, when we pay too much attention to what technology can do, we tend to forget the great human qualities that excellent teachers have. So well, we try to integrate technology and good teachers, you know, like in wonderful human quality combine them and create a new system where that many other governments and many other big companies cannot think of. I think that is possible because we are small in detail and we are big in our vision. New Zealand, I was born in 1986. I really like this country. 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 그이 뉴질랜드 회사하고 저희하고 일을 하다 보니까 이게 단지 양국 간의 어떤 문제가 아니라 양국 간의 시너지를 내서 전 세계로 갈수 있다라는 모델을 저희들이 만들었고요. 그게 지금 저희들이 만든 스마트 러닝 시스템입니다. 그래서 스마트리라고 하고요. 지금 서울에 하나가 있고 화천군에 지자체에 또 하나가 있는데 이 시스템을 보러 세계 각국에서 보러 오고 있습니다. 그런데 이 시스템이 좋은 것은 전 세계에 퍼져 나갈 수 있다라는 거거든요. 전 세계 60억 인구가 비영어권입니다. 근데 앞으로 사회가 비영어권 사람들도 세계와 소통해야 되기 때문에 이것이 세계 어린이들이 글로벌 랭귀지로 소통할 수 있도록 도와주게 되고 그럼 세계가 하나가 되고 뉴질랜드하고 한국이 비록 작은 나라지만 거기서 중요한 역할을 할수 있는 
그런 일이라서 굉장히 보람이 있습니다. The coach and students and between students, it's all about collaboration and creative thinking that 21st century education has to emphasize. So with this coach pad, well, this is to assign seats for every student. It's kind of drag and drop. Teacher can do it very intuitively. And this is students' user interface. Well, like you, you can see, we do have integrated writing, integrated reading, integrated speaking. And this kind of unique really one comes up, you know, like being active. 이거는 스마트폰뿐만 아니라 예. 앞으로 기기는 스마트폰과 스마트 태블릿, 아이패드, 갤럭시 태블릿, 그리고 기타 IPTV라든지 스마트 TV 굉장히 다양한 스크린을 갖게 됩니다. 그걸 N 스크린이라고 하는데요. 그래서 다양한 기기와 다양한 통신 방법 이것을 다 충족시킬 수 있는 교육 방법이 필요하고 거기에 여전히 기계가 따라잡을 수 없는 좋은 선생님이 가지고 있는 훌륭한 자질 이것도 통합이 되어야 됩니다. 그런데 저희가 자부하는 것은 뉴질랜드하고 한국이 작은 나라이지만 세계에서 지금 가장 앞서가는 모델을 만들었다는 것입니다. And this is the smart zone. You do have two different kinds of computer, and this one has the keyboard, and this is for all the children where they need to practice speaking and writing. They need to write <coughs> by keyboarding. And this is my child who's going to come to New Zealand to study and experience New Zealand education. Right. We did have uh, Mr. Raka, New Zealand sort of ambassador to Korea, came together with Wendy and a couple of other people. 현재 그 비용을 지불할 수 있는 여력이 있는 사람들에게는 저희가 상업적으로 판매를 하고요. 그리고 어, 가난한 지역이나 아프리카 대륙이나 이런 곳들에는 무상으로 지원을 해주고 있습니다. Students is in sort of teaching learning process, right? So if you look at this, this particular student has finished. And then 얘기는 우리가 한국은 작은 나라이고 자원이 없는 나라이고 뉴질랜드 역시 작은 나라이고 인력이 충분치 않은 나라입니다. 그럼 이런 것들을 이제 우리가 디스어드벤티지라고 볼수 있는데 사실은 그런 우리가 가진 디스어드벤티지가 바꿔 생각하면 어드벤티지가 될수 있습니다. 왜냐하면 미국이나 중국 같이 큰 나라들은 자기네 도메스틱 마켓을 중요하게 생각합니다. 그런데 우리 같은 나라들은 처음에 뭘 개발할 때부터 전 세계를 생각해야 되고 또 그랬을 때 훌륭한 결과가 옵니다. 그리고 우리가 전 세계에서 어, 훌륭한 플레이어가 될수 있고요. 그래서 양국 간의 시너지가 양국만을 위한 것이 아니라 서로 파는 것 이거에 그치지 않고 전 세계로 갈수 있는 모델을 만들어야 된다고 생각합니다. Those language schools purchase books and use those books to teach students. Well, the thing we provide, uh, it is a system, but the model for purchase is just like buying advanced form of books. Economic working was uh, the refocus, and Beijing consensus was uh, uh, presented as uh, the alternative model against the Washington consensus. And these theories, uh, these are uh, the changes uh, show up that show that uh, other than the standard of the neoclassical market uh, economy, a very different kind of diverse development strategy possible in this neoliberal world. And also, also commercializing and exporting the technological innovations that arise from two key areas. The first is the shifting energy resources based on fossil fuels to ones based on renewable energies. Solar, wind, tidal wave power, um, hydrogen fuel cells at some point as well. The introduction of a fairly comprehensive compensation scheme that I'll detail in a moment. But for me, the unfortunate thing about this and Korea's agreement with the European Union is that it rather undermines a lot of the arguments that I was making. So I'm going to have to confess that, well, maybe I was actually wrong on some of this, and Korea. Uh, is going to uh, really change the whole landscape of trade agreements around the region. So we are trying to find uh, the other areas where we can have a kind of a trade-off. 
but uh, it's a bit I mean, complicated. <laughs> so I cannot go into details, but the important thing is that uh, both government has a very strong I mean, political will to conclude this uh, uh, agreement as soon as possible. And we keep on talking, and this year we had a trade minister's meeting uh, three or four times. And uh, we had a chief uh, lead negotiators uh, get together. It's not a formal um, negotiation, but it's kind of a stock-taking uh, uh, meeting. And we promise to keep on talking, and uh, uh, next round of the chief negotiators meeting will be held early next year in January. Uh, but as you know, we are expecting a presidential election in December. And uh, in Korea, everything is now kind of standstill. So we cannot make any major important decision until the new government uh, steps in early next year. There's a possibility of the, the development of state, the space active war, will be uh, uh, revived in Korean economy, uh, development of the state, according to uh, 1982. After that, Hamas goes back there. Not to mention that uh, those people, all kind, many, many, uh, the core part is an uh, institution. Differently from develop, development of state theory, this is uh, still under construction. So Korean development state has uh, the severed uh, feature. Formulate policies in consultation with the ministries. Uh, the Ministry of Knowledge Economy before the agreements are implemented. Three very unique candidates in many ways have made sort of statements. The cultural revolution, um, renewable energy. Uh, as I ask because I have a son who, who graduated from your department. <laughs> <laughs> who's actually in, in DFAT in Australia and is involved in the negotiations with, well, with, with Japan, Korea. The Australian and New Zealand interests would like to see changed. But, I mean, down between North American R&B and K-pop is disappearing fast, not in the least you... <laughs> There are some connections in terms of friends, friends. Okay, so... <웃음> 호주와 뉴질랜드의 학자 또는 한인사회단체 기관 대표와 관계자들이 참여한 이 컨퍼런스를 통해 2012년 현재 한국을 바라보는 다양한 시각과 의견을 나눌 수 있는 현장이었습니다. 코이티비 노영래입니다. <웃음> 멜라민이 없는 방목되어진 소에서 제치한 100% 뉴질랜드 초이어 하이웰 초유는 엄마의 마음에 담았습니다. 하이웰 헬스앤젯은 뉴질랜드 현지 약국들과 건강식품점들에서 판매되는 약 2천여 가지의 상품들이 구비되어진 초대형 건강식품 할인 매장입니다. 언제나 고객님들께 믿음과 건강을 약속드리겠습니다. 헬스앤젯